Yes, hello again to all you wonderful smelling fragrance fanatics out there and welcome back to Mags Frags where it's all about honest reviews, real insights and letting the scent take centre stage. I'm Paul and if you're new to the channel then please consider subscribing and that way you'll be notified whenever I upload any new videos and that means you won't miss out on discovering your next perfect signature scent. And speaking of which, uh, I've just got back from a few days in London where I've been on the hunt for an autumn and winter signature fragrance for myself. And after scouring some of the most renowned boutiques and a whirlwind of trials and testing, I actually picked up a, a few that I really liked and that caught my attention. So I will be talking about each one individually over the next few days. But the one I'm focusing on today is this latest release uh, from indie brand Arquist, which is called Almond Suede. I've been really interested in trying a few out from this brand for a while now, especially the likes of Nanban and the Architects Club, which seem to be the most popular ones in the collection. But with this being uh, the latest release, and so far nobody's really spoken about it on YouTube, I thought it'd be uh, a pretty good one to uh, review first. This 2024 launch, crafted by the renowned uh, perfumer Calice Becker, takes inspiration from the Spanish city of Cordoba where back in the day confectioners crafted almond marzipan of unrivaled delicacy. The uh, secret lay in the recipe of almond flour, sugar, saffron and orange blossom, which became somewhat of an art form. Meanwhile, uh, skilled artisans shaped like leather goods in the nearby streets, uh, creating exquisite uh, wonders, and the velvety scent of marzipan mingling with the oaky Cordoba leather formed a, a bridge between the two traditional industries. And this fragrance beautifully captures the essence of this historical time. These two major accords create a sensory bridge between the sweet and the rugged, making it perfect, uh, kind of a perfect transition into the cooler months of the year, bringing together a unique mix of sweetness, spice, and powdery warmth. It comes in an order par from concentration, and it's priced at £180 for a 100ml size bottle. And I picked this one up from Bloom Perfumery in Covent Garden who uh, stock a great selection of rare independent brands. So definitely check out their website if you uh, are looking for something totally unique. Or better still, pop in and see them in person if you'd ever visit in London. Uh, you can sample anything they stock and uh, the staff are really helpful and uh, don't make you feel pressured in any way. And this is not a sponsored review, by the way. Um, but they are also one of uh, only two or three stockists of Arquist fragrances in the UK. So I'll leave a link to their website in the description if you do fancy checking out uh, this brand. Okay, so in terms of the presentation, everything's uh, quite simple, minimalistic and uh, elegant with this. Uh, starting with the box, it just comes in an all-white cardboard and features an architect's one-to-one -one scale drawing of the bottle, which contains all the dimensions, etc. Around the side, we've got a silhouette of the uh, the bottle, which is embossed into the box. And then at the top, we've got a, an Arquist logo, uh, again, containing all the uh, dimensions. Around the back is where it explains the inspiration behind the creation and we've also got a, a full note breakdown on there too. The bottle again is a nice simple design and it comes in a, like a, a round translucent glass in a, a brown tint. On the front is the name of the scent printed in white and there's another brand logo which is uh, stamped into the top of the cap uh, which is made of metal and it's uh, a click on style cap. Uh, but even though it's a, a no-nonsense design, it does still, still feel re really premium quality. It delivers a, a nice, uh, smooth blast of juice. So yeah, simple, but very elegant. Okay, so into the note breakdown, and the notes included in this one are pink peppercorn, Italian bergamot, honeycomb absolute, bitter almond, Sisters concrete from Spain, North African neroli, Saffron, Orange Blossom, Candied Sugar, Vanilla Absolute, Pine Tar from France, and a Suede Accord. Okay, so the opening first five minutes of this is a burst of brightness and spice, thanks to the pink peppercorn and the Italian bergamot. These notes provide a fresh, slightly citrusy start that feels invigorating, while the pepper adds a nice kick of warmth. There's a, a sweetness right from the beginning too, courtesy of the honeycomb absolute and of course the almond note, which produces a golden, almost syrupy warmth that sets the tone for the gourmand marzipan aspect of the fragrance. However, the suede note is the true star of the show here. Rich, musky and smooth, it anchors the fragrance and just gives it a warm, tactile quality that feels almost like slipping on a well-worn leather jacket. 
The suede is not a sharp, harsh leather, but rather uh, something that's much more refined and gentle, with a powdery finish that makes it incredibly wearable. The marzipan and saffron add layers of complexity to, uh, to the suede, uh, and the almond note is soft and creamy with just a hint of bitterness that keeps it from being too sweet, while the saffron adds a spicy warmth that just enhances the leathery uh, quality of the fragrance. Together, these notes create a gourmand leather hybrid that feels unique and uh, unlike anything else that I've, uh, I've tried recently on the market right now. There's a, a sweetness to almond suede, but it's a, a sophisticated sweetness, more of a, a suggestion of a dessert rather than an actual gourmand treat. The saffron and pine tar notes uh, in particular give the fragrance an earthy, resinous quality that balances out the sweeter elements, making it a fragrance that can be worn by those who typically uh, shy away from overly sweet scents. There's also the Sisters Concrete note, which is definitely not to be confused with the type of concrete that you lay the foundations of a house with. It's a, a heady floral essential oil in the labdanum family, and it produces a, an ambery, smoky aroma, uh, which I do also get some smokiness running alongside the other richer chords, making you think of like sun-drenched leathering and uh, maybe a, an industrial smoky environment. It's not a dark scent profile though, and it's balanced by the neroli and orange blossom, which bring a, a floral brightness that just lightens the composition, and it adds like a soft citrusy sweetness that contrasts beautifully with the deeper, more resinous notes. I have read a, a couple of comments online from people that have clearly not smelled it and claim that it's all about the marzipan accord in the opening, and that it smells like a Bakewell tart or a, a Christmas cake, etc. But to me, that's way off the mark, and it's not what I get from it whatsoever. I do pick up on the almond for sure, uh, but it's certainly not a marzipan bomb like some people uh, would have you believe. And it's more of a, a supporting note uh, to begin with. And then it becomes a little bit more prominent later on into the dry down once the saffron in particular starts to uh, settle down. And like I say, I get much more of the suede in the first half of the same, which basically sticks around throughout its entire lifespan, uh, but does mellow out later on. But sure enough, uh, as you get past like the first couple of hours, it does start to take on more of a slightly sweeter gourmand character with the vanilla, the almond and the candied sugar just coming through a little bit more to the forefront. Uh, but even then it's balanced by the pine tar and the smoky leathery touches, so in my opinion it never smells like a sweet dessert that I'd want to eat as such. What I find most remarkable about almond suede is its ability to feel both nostalgic and modern at the same time. The marzipan accord gives it a comforting familiarity, uh, while the suede and the saffron just lend an air of sophistication. It's a beautifully composed fragrance that manages to uh, be warm and inviting without uh, being overly sweet, thanks to its clever interplay of like gourmand and uh, leathery facets. Yeah, so the title of the video might be the giveaway, but yes, this is the perfect autumn scent in my opinion. It's warm and comforting, and when you smell it, it kind of makes you think of the colours of this time of year, the browns, the oranges and the yellows, and it just gives you a, a nice warm hug. It's versatile enough to wear in the evenings or as a day scent, and I think it's also suitable for both men and women to wear with ease. I'd say that it gives off more of a classy mature vibe, so it'd probably be best suited to people over the age of 30 or perhaps even 40. And it's got a really relaxed vibe about it, so it'd work well for like a date night or if you're going out for a nice quiet meal, etc. Uh, but it's definitely not a, a, an out-out or a, a clubbing scent in my opinion. It's more like, a, more just like a, a nice experience type scent. In terms of the performance, you get a nice, decent, powerful projection for the first hour or two, but it settles into more of a, an intimate scent bubble after that. It's long lasting with the base notes of suede, pine tar and vanilla lingering on the skin for hours, but this is more for the wearer to enjoy and also for the people uh, that are in a close proximity to you. It's uh, not a loud attention grabbing scent that's going to enter a room before you do and that's also going to choke people out if you decide to wear it as a work fragrance etc. However, it's definitely got enough uh, depth and power to cut through the cool air if you do decide to wear it for like a, an autumnal walk in the woods when you're wrapped up in your favourite woolly hat and scarf. Okay, so in summary, I would say that Almond Suede is a unique and elegant fragrance that manages to evoke a sense of place and time while remaining versatile enough for modern wear. 
If you're looking for a signature scent this autumn and you're drawn to powdery, musky and slightly gourmand fragrances with, with like a luxurious edge, this one is definitely worth checking out. It's not 100% safe to blind buy and there will be a few people that won't get it, uh, but it's one of those where I think more people will really enjoy it rather than disliking it. I also think it's reasonably priced too, coming in at less than £2 per millilitre, which is half of uh, what you'd pay for a lot of the independent brands. So my final verdict is that this is going to be my uh, 2024 autumn signature scent and I really look forward to uh, making a pretty sizable dent in it over the, uh, the coming months. Okay, so once again, that's about it for today's review. But coming up this week, I've got a couple more to talk about that I picked up from London, uh, starting with this one from Pierre Guillaume uh, that's called Dilshad 17.1. I'll be telling you all about this one, which is a brand new fragrance. And I've also got two really cool gourmands uh, from Sly John's Lab. Uh, so make sure you uh, tune in for those because they do offer something quite different. And finally, my channel did pass uh, the 30k subscriber mark just this morning. Uh, so if you are one of those that have subscribed and helped grow the channel, then you're an absolute legend. And I'd just like to thank you ever so much for your support and also helping me uh, to continue my fragrance journey. So until next time, guys, thank you very much for tuning in to this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye bye for now.